Another Annie Stats video. This one is called What Other Characters Feel About Sid Kagano, Eminence in Shadow Season 2. Remember, sub to his channel, like his videos, guys. Let's see. First up, we got Alpha. Alpha, she has devoted her life to Sid and his cause and is deeply in love with him. Now, this is what I call Stockholm Syndrome. We gaslit this girl because we saved her, remember? She was a blob, mana overload, possession, right? So we saved her and then we gaslit her into thinking she has a higher purpose in life by defeating the cult of Diablos. And even though we lie and manipulate her and basically groomed her, and there was a John Smith arc. Remember the John Smith arc? She was like in tears, fucking crying. She's just like, oh my God, why will you not wait for me? I'm so close. And she just, and, and John Smith just fucking tosses her off the train. And Alpha just sobbing on the train tracks. And, and Sid's like, <laughs> nice role play. Peace, Alpha. I swear to God, Sid's a fucking maniac when he deals with these girls. Okay, Beta. Beta is madly in love with Sid. Now, I'm not sure what's stronger. We have deeply in love and we have madly in love with Sid, but Beta isn't madly in love with Sid. To the point that some of her actions are borderline stalkerish. I mean, if you think about it, all she does is just document um, Shadow's feats, right? And she just basically exaggerates them like my fucking YouTube titles and writes it in a book and just writes headcanon, right? That's, that's, and then she sells the product. Gamma. She is committed to Sid. So, not really... I. I then again, how many different ways can you say she's in love with somebody, right? So she's committed to Sid and hopes to be acknowledged by him. If anything, I think Shadow or Sid, like, thinks uh, Gamma is... What's it called? If there's a spoiler, go to the video and check it out right now for me. If there is anyone that Shadow is jealous or envious of, right? I think it's Gamma. Because, like, all the other girls are like, meh. But then Gamma has money. And Sid's like, fuck, I wish I had his money. In fact, isn't that how the entire John Smith arc started, right? That, that's the entire point. And he steals money from her. She, she also has the Sid plushies, though, remember? Gamma has the Sid plushies. Claire. She's overly protective of Sid. And yet she does her best to toughen him up. To secure a better future for him. I mean, she did try to, like, land us, like, a government job. When we went to the Lawless City, I think the whole point was to visit, like, a Dark Knight's office. So that we could see if there's, like, a, a comfy government position for, for Sid. But Sid's like, nah, I'm here to fucking pickpocket. Peace. <laughs> okay. Ada. She is in awe of Sid's knowledge. And firmly believes that he possesses unparalleled wisdom. When you're a girl from this like magical isekai world where like the internet doesn't exist if sid even explained the concept of the internet or like smartphones ada could probably make it 100 percent. but it's like yeah that, it, that's why that's why she's like respects Sid because he, he has like modern knowledge which should be pretty simple for us but you know to them back in the day that's not the case we got alexia she is in love with sid now she wasn't before but then after episode 5 and the whole I'm Atomic moment, I know that she doesn't know who Shadow is. But still, after the end of that arc, right? There was the, what's it called? The bodiless murder incident when the blood was splattered. Sid's blood, right? Because she was like, you want to get back together? And Sid's like, nah, <laughs> peace out, bitch. But there definitely is some romantic uh, feelings towards Sid now. I think that's developing. Especially if they're doing like private one-on-one -on -one training. And for the future, I think this girl is pretty fucking important, right? I think she is. More important than Iris, to be honest. In fact, I think she's going to get stronger than Iris at this rate. Iris is most likely going to like, uh, what's the word? She's going to get even more desperate and fall into this like, uh, fall into this, uh, the thing everybody does when they're desperate for power. They just go to the Cult of Diablos, kind of like Getan, huh? So Iris might actually end up going to the Cult of Diablos and become a rounds. Could you imagine if Elixir at that point has to fight Iris? That, I think, would be a cool story. I think it would be. Rose. Rose fell in love with Sid when he saved her from a terrorist attack. I wonder if it's that moment. Oh my goodness. Hold up, Beatrix. I think that um, the moment that Rose fell in love with Sid was when, during the festival, the tournament, right? He did a bunch of mop food techniques. I, maybe that's not the love part. I think that's the respect part. That's when Rose was, was like respecting Sid because like, damn, you are weak as fuck. But right now, you are straight up just like doing all these mob food techniques and not like, uh, you're refusing to lose. And I think that really earned her respect. She definitely made a clear statement there if you go back to the episode. And, and 
after that, follows it up by, you know, taking the sacrifice against the terrorist, which is in his headcanon. He just wanted to be the first one to be dead around, under a terrorist attack because that means that he's the most mob-like. If you're the first one to go out during a terrorist attack, you are like the most NPC character. So that's the whole point of it. But then Rose saw that and it's like, oh my god, this boy just fucking risked his life. I, I'm, I'm in love with him now. I feel bad for her though. Now, he's her emotional anchor, giving her the strength to move forward. Is he though? Well, in Rose's delusions, yes, Sid or Shadow is always there to kind of like back her up. But Sid and Shadow is not really there to back her up, right? He's just doing his own bullshit. But somehow it kind of it kind of like works. He's always there for her in a really fucked up in a in a way that he didn't mean it to. But to her in those moments, like whenever the power transfer, remember? The burger rapper giving the burger rap to Rose saying, Hey, I believe in whatever you're gonna do, you should just do whatever the fuck you want. And then meeting her in the sewage, you know, the, the church sewage or whatever, with a piano, when we gave her the power there. And then fucking in the second season, we showed Rose, hey, your mom's getting her booty cheeks clapped by a perv ass, like, you should see this. And then giving her advice and more stuff like that. They're all really not Sid trying to be an emotional anchor, but he ends up doing it. So Rose probably thinks that Sid is like the best boyfriend that ever existed. All these girls are just fucking delusional and schizo. Dude, I feel bad for them. All right, Beatrix. Beatrix came to respect uh, Shadow for strength and was glad that she had faced him in battle. That's right. In the finale of season one. Wait, should I read the Zeta one, guys? I'm not. I, I don't. I don't know if I should um re, uh, read the Zeta one. The Beatrix one, though. I think in episode twenty, there was a moment where mundane man or Shadow showed up, right, to like um go against Pervasat. And then Beatrix rose up to the occasion because she's like, oh, this is a good fight. I just want to join in a good fight. That was pretty much it. Zeta. Zeta is deeply in love with Sid to an extreme degree, reaching a level of fanaticism. Now, if you told me, if you just replaced the word Zeta here with Victoria, I would say the same thing. In fact, isn't Victoria more like a fanatic? Because, you know, she was like a high priest or something before. But then, if you examine the finale of season two, the girl... Besides some kind of rock-like grave, remember there's like a big rock and like medium-sized rock and small rock and there's a girl with a cult of Diablo sign holding it there, hiding her signature middle cleavage. That was Zeta. That was Zeta. So now it's like, damn. Zeta and Victoria, they were friends in the past somehow. It's kind of making more sense as to like how she could be a fanatic also, church ties. I don't fucking know. This is some future stuff. Next up, we have Yukime. Oh... Upon witnessing his incredible strength, she developed respect for Shadow. In fact, Getan even gave us like, um, their blessings, right? So, <laughs> when we were asking Getan, where the fuck is the money? And Getan's like, I'll give it all to you right now. But the I'll give it to you in that context, man. I'll give you Yukime. So, technically, we were, we've received Yukime, right? <laughs> she knows about that too, right? So, are we like lovers somehow? I don't know how that works, but it is cool that Shadow Garden and the, I think... Her faction is called the White Fox, right? We're like alliances now. Maria, the sex worker that we saved in the Lawless City. And now we saved in the tavern too, but Sid didn't even know. So you know how we see Marie in the tavern after um, the Lawless City arc? Sid didn't even know who Marie was. And of course, Marie didn't know who Sid was, but Marie didn't know who Shadow was. She is extremely grateful towards Shadow for her saving life. Yeah. Aurora. Aurora was deeply moved by Sid, risking his life for her by fighting Olivier. Did we fight for her, though? <laughs> Is this another instance of Sid just doing his things that he wants to do and the girl's thinking, Oh, you're doing this for me? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, we, 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 fought, we fought Olivier. That's right. And as a result, she re developed romantic feelings for him now. Whenever, you know, Aurora goes into <laughs> Shadow, in, into Claire's body and, and transforms into Aurora. And, if, and at that point, Aurora was to make love with Shadow. Would that be incest? How does that work? When, if Aurora takes over Claire, does she still have Claire blood? The, the family blood, right? I wouldn't think that it'd be a completely new body composition, right? I think it's just the appearance and maybe the, the, the personality and the mindset that changes. I'm not really sure. It is still Claire's body. I don't know, man. 
I don't know. Do we need to think this hard for it? No, we don't. No. Oh, boy. We have everyone's favorite princess, Iris Midger. Emphasis on mid. She holds an intense hatred for Sid's shadow persona and feels humiliated by him. Now, the wording of this, the way the anime stats can award this makes me... It makes it sound like um, Iris actually know who Shadow is, but no, no, no. She just hates Shadow because... Well, tough luck. You fucking... Not, okay, and the saddest thing is, she's fixated on Shadow here, but even before the Battle of the Humiliation, like, Monday Man straight up humiliated Iris. Huh? Monday Man literally did not have a weapon in hand, was just doing little movements, and Iris is just having a fucking schizo attack. And she's like, oh my god, he's coming for me with a weapon. And then, we take her out, and then, she fucking hates us now. And it's like, damn, like, fucking get over yourself. And then, she gets an artifact with the fire sword, and she fights with us with Beatrix, although I'd like to think that was not a 2v1. That was actually a 1v1, with Iris trying to fucking get in and play. But Beatrix and Shadow were going too fast, and Iris was always, like, lagging behind. That's what I think was going on. Shameless. Sorry. Very, very, um, very shameful display here. And like this princess, she started off as like, if you think about the, um, the relationship between Alexia and Iris, Alexia was the one that was insecure, chasing after her sister. That was always so angry and mad. But then now you have Iris, who is like the exact opposite now, right? Alexia is the enlightened one chasing after a better future and iris is the one being all salty and depressing and becoming all emo it's really sad what's happened to this character new she developed such strong romantic feelings for sid after meeting him in person that that she was willing to assassinate her fiance if he's still in sid's way that's crazy that's fucking crazy there's that guy marco right i think it's iris's um top guards there's a guy named marco who has like, bl like blue hair and maybe like a cape that's her fiance, but like news, news on um, person, like her identity um, was like before she was like some kind of royal, but then that identity was killed off before she joined Shadow Garden. But yeah, she would, she would, she would straight up say, fuck the fiance for Sid. What did you, what do you even see in Sid? Whatever. Delta. Delta truly loves and admires Sid, hugging him and marking him with her scent every time they meet. So all the real um, close body touch from Delta to Sid, like her just like hugging Sid and just getting on his back. Technically, that is like a dog or like a cat. I know she's not a cat, but technically it's like a dog that's just like rubbing themselves on Sid, huh? Would she piss on Sid too then? Don't dogs mark their territory by pissing on objects? But then again, a, a, a pet wouldn't piss on you to declare their love for you. I, I don't think so. I don't think so, right? Now we have... Not Marie, but this is Mary, right? Remember, it's Vampire Hunter Mary or something. She appreciates Shadow for freeing and saving Elizabeth. And I'd say Shadow appreciates you for those fucking banger one-liners in Lala City. You guys have to realize, like, Mary here, she kind of hard carried the Lala City arc because of the fucking NPC lines. The moon is red. The time of awakening is near. Run if you value your life or some shit. And something about, like, the Berserk of Gluttony. No, that's another anime. Something like that. Epsilon. She is so determined to be the perfect woman for Sid that she uses slime magic. Dot, dot, dot. I think we know what Sid's gonna say, right? She uses slime magic to make her titties and ass look bigger. How's he gonna word it? To enlarge her bottom and breast in the hopes of attracting him. Very, very YouTube-friendly way of, you know, her usage of power there. Oh shit, we got Sherry Barnett. Nah, I thought this is supposed to be season two characters, but okay, Sherry made it in. She holds an intense hatred for Sid's shadow persona, but fell in love with Sid's mob character, which is like, how does she even fall in love with him? I think it's because, no, no, no. The first time they met was after Sid says, fuck you, Alexia, and she got slashed and he had blood stained all over his body, right? And then we bumped into Sherry who was carrying a bunch of books. And then we try to help her up. But like the moment that she met the eyes, she was already in love with Sid. And then we accidentally gave her the chocolate. And then she started eating those chocolates in a really sussy way, just moaning. <laughs> those chocolate scenes, <laughs> those chocolate scenes were so sus. And now she just hates us. And I'm not sure where the author's going to go with this. I mean, if you really think about it, 
If the author is willing to take a character like Akane Nishino from episode one, season one, and we thought that she was gone forever, right? We get Isekai and it's like, oh, none of these characters actually fucking mattered. But it's like, nah, nah, that did matter. We're going to wait two seasons and for the movie, it's going to be her arc. So it's like, hmm, maybe we should let the author cook. Maybe Sherry Barnett will have her time. Maybe she'll be the end game opponent for us. Who knows, man? Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is grateful for Sid because thanks to him, she regained control of herself during the the Red Moon. That's true. And if you look at the Master of Garden content, all the dialogues from Elizabeth. I mean, then again, this is not exclusive to Elizabeth, but every girl is so down bad. Elizabeth is like, mm, I want to spend the entire night making love to you. It's like, what the fuck? And she does this like cute little like um, haunting... I don't know. You know who Tao does this from Genshin Impact, right? That's not supposed to be like a cat club. It's supposed to be like a spooky ghost, but she's a vampire. Anyways, that's it. That's that. That's what every girl from Emerson Shadow thinks about Sid. I'd like to see Sid's mom, but it is what it is. Guys, give this video a like. Sub to the channel. And until next time, take care.